Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Muggle Magic. For this video, I teamed up with a few wand shops to bring you a re-release of my wand box templates. So a big thank you to Ilchester Wand Shop, Wands of Ergon, Nebulous Wands, and Wandcraft. Feel free to contact me if you run a wand shop or really any kind of magical shop and you want to collaborate in some way. Now I'm bringing back these templates as like an editable template, but there are also a few preset templates, including all of these wand shop logos. So if you bought a wand from one of these shops, you can make your own box for that wand. Or if you want to use some other logo, I'm going to show you how you can put that logo on your wand box in this tutorial. Once you've downloaded the templates and you open it up, this is what you'll see. So we have some eight and a half by 11 and 11 by 17 templates, which are uh, pre-saved for you if you just want to use those. But for this tutorial, we're going to be using the editable box template right here. So we'll pull this into Photoshop and um, I'll also do a GIMP portion of this tutorial after I'm done with Photoshop. Okay, so once you have this opened, as you can see here, I'm just gonna go ahead and hide these guidelines here by pressing Control and H. Okay, so as you can see, this is the full box template here. And it already has a few logos in it. So if I zoom in, you can see we have the Wandcraft logo, and that's on this layer here. So we can press this little eye, or click this little eye icon here to hide it. And then show the one behind that. We have Ilchester Wand Shop. Next we have Wands of Ergon, and then we have Nebulous Wands. Those are the four logos that I pre-set on these templates. And if you have a wand shop and you'd like me to put your logo on here, just let me know. I can put your logo on here no problem, and I'll update the templates. So every once in a while, you may, if you download the templates again, you guys may notice that there are more wand shop logos showing up here. And um, I'll go ahead and leave in the description box notes for every time I update this and add another wand box, or uh, I'm sorry, wand maker's logo. So anyways, we've got all of the logos here. You can uh, hide and show each one of these layers here. And these are just basically filters. So this one makes the box red. This one makes it kind of an orange or a brown. This one makes it green. And then the top one here will make it black and actually make the uh, logo kind of gray. So in order to customize this, let's say you want to use your own logo here. So we'll hide this logo, uh, hide all the logos and make sure that you select the box template layer, which you can see is right here. If you already have the logo, you can just pull it in to this file right here. Um, just click it and drag it in here. If not, you can find it online, which is what I'm going to do. So for this tutorial, just for uh, for this example, let's do the Ollivander's logo. So I'm just going to search Google Images for Ollivander's logo, and you get quite a few results. Uh, you want something that has a solid background color and um, the logo to be a solid color, something black and white like this, so it's going to work perfectly. So now I'm going to right click and click view image, which will allow me to download. So if I save the file, I can go in here and click on the folder. There we go. So here's the file. I'm going to pull it into my template. And now, as you can see, when you pull a file into Photoshop, it has this bounding box where you can scale it. Um, also, if you pull, if you drag your cursor away from it, you can rotate this. If you click and hold and rotate, we don't need to rotate this. We want to scale it. Now, if I click and drag, you can see I can scale this logo, but I don't want it to warp like this. So um, let's go ahead and hold shift and alt after we click. And now you can scale it uniformly. So it maintains that same like aspect ratio as you're scaling. So just scale it to the size you want it to be on the front of the box. I'm going to say about right here is this will be perfect. Uh, hit enter to make that accept that uh, the scale of this. So now over here in the tools panel, which is right here, we have a wand tool. So we want to select this wand tool and click anywhere on this white area. 
and that should automatically select all of the white around here. And if it doesn't select all of it, like if, if it doesn't select uh, the inside of the D and the inside of the R here, anything that's not connected to this outside, you want to um, make sure that this uh, option right here is not clicked. As long as that's not clicked, you're gonna be able to select all of the white just by clicking one area. Um, it looks like we need to right click and rasterize this layer before we can do anything. Okay, so once you've rasterized this layer, now we can remove the background by holding control and hitting the X key. So now we've completely deleted the background off of this logo. And it doesn't look that great right now, but it will. So select any of these other log uh, logo layers and right click it, copy layer style. And then we wanna go back to the layer that we pulled in right here, right click and paste layer style. So now we've got the right color of the logo. This is the color we want our logo to be. And on any of these other logo layers, you can select the layer, which is on the left, or you can select this other box, which is on the right side, and this is the layer mask. We want to copy this layer mask onto our logo layer that we pulled in. So select the layer mask and hold Alt, click and drag it down onto your layer. And as you can see, that put a nice texture on the logo itself. So that's it. That's all you really have to do to get your logo to look good on this wand box. Now we need to make our printable templates because right now this is way too big to actually print. So I have included four layers up here. You can see there's uh, two layers for 11 by 17 and two layers by, for eight and a half by 11. So let's select 11 by 17 A. If I hold control and click on this layer, it automatically selects this portion of the template. So this will be one part of our template. So let's go to file and new, and then we want uh, in inches, we need 11 by 17, and we want the orientation to be landscape. Also make sure that the resolution is 300 pixels per inch and create. So now we have our blank template here, and as you can see, that opened another tab. So let's go back to our Wandbox tab, and we want to copy this. So to do that, we can do Edit, and we can do Copy Merged, or you can do Shift, Control, and C together. And then we can go back to our untitled template here, the file that we just opened that's 11 by 17, and we want to Edit and Paste or Control V. So there we go, now we have one part of our template. Now let's go back here and let's control and uh, click on this layer. Now that selected this portion. So this is all we need for the other part of our template. So let's control shift C or edit copy merged. And then let's go back to our untitled template here and control V or you could do edit and paste. So now you can see there are two layers here on top of a background layer. Um, this one has one part of the template and if we hide it and show this top one, layer two has this just this very end part that we're gonna need to glue together. So we're ready to print as long as you're doing 11 by 17. If not, just follow these exact same steps, only you want the file to be eight and a half by 11 and you want to use the eight and a half by 11 uh, layers. And that's pretty much it. You can now print this and create your wand box according to my tutorial video, which I will link in the description box. Now let's go ahead and open up GIMP and let's do this in GIMP. So here we go. I've already got GIMP open right here. And as you can see, the layout of GIMP is very similar. We have all of our tools on the left here and then we have our layers on the right here. So we should be able to just go ahead and pull this wand box template into GIMP. There we go. Okay, we've got it open. As you can see, it looks a little bit different. Um, it looks like, yeah, some of those layer styles didn't quite copy over like they should have, and that's okay. So if I just grab this and pull it in, again, we get the logo right here and I need to scale this up. So we're going to go over to our tools panel and what you wanna do is select the scale tool, which is right here, or you can hold shift and type S. And then you want to click on this little logo that you want to scale. 
And once you click on it, you can see you have all of these different scale points. And basically we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna click on one of the corners and drag it to scale. And again, you can kind of warp it like this, but we don't wanna do that. So hold shift and that will maintain the aspect. If you hold control, it will keep it all centered. So let's hold shift and control and let's drag the logo to about this scale right here. Looks good. And then over here, we want to click the scale button. Now to get the background off of this logo, it's gonna be a little bit different. In GIMP, instead of the magic wand, which is kind of called the fuzzy select tool in this, you wanna select the tool right next to that, which is called select by color. Use the select by color tool and then click on the black instead of the white. And if you click and hold and then drag it down, you can see that it kind of selects a little bit more just in case it's not selecting enough of that logo, you can kind of drag it to select more of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and select about that. And there we go. So now we have basically the logo selected. And again, in GIMP, we're gonna do this a little bit differently than Photoshop. You're going to hide this layer which has the logo on it. And then down here, we're going to create a new layer, which is this button right here. Just click OK. We still have our selection here. And now we want the color to be the right color for this logo. And for that, right here, I have a text file called logo color. Open that up and it just has this text in it right here. What we wanna do is copy that text. You can close this out, go back to GIMP, click on that little black uh, box right here. The black is really the color that you have selected. So right now, if I were to fill this in, it would just be black. And right here in HTML notation, we wanna paste in what we copied and click OK. As you can see, we've changed the color here. So now we just need our paint bucket tool or bucket fill tool, which is right here. And we're just going to fill this in. And there we go. Now you can uh, click your rectangle selection tool and then click anywhere to deselect. And now we have our Ollivander's logo on this. The next step is to get one of the um, layer masks from these logos onto the layer that we just created with our logo in it right here. Select the layer mask. We're going to right click and we're gonna do mask to selection right here. Now that selected our layer mask. So it's gonna look a little weird right now, but hold on. If we go back to the logo layer that we created, we're gonna right click and then we're gonna select add layer mask. And then in this menu here, you wanna click selection. So it's adding a layer mask based on your selection here and click add. So now we'll click anywhere to deselect and you can see that we have that uh, kind of texture to our logo now. And there you have it. That is how we add our logo to our wand box in GIMP. Again, we need to make a template out of this. So in GIMP, we're just gonna do file, new. And for this new file, you want to make sure that instead of pixels, you want inches selected here. And then width, we want the width to be 17 if you're doing 11 by 17 and height to be 11. If not, then you would do the eight and a half by 11 size here. You wanna open up your advanced options and make sure that the resolution is 300 on both X and Y. Now click OK. And then just click OK, ignore this if you get that message. So you, as you can see, that also opened a new tab, which is our fi the file we're on right now, and it's a blank template right here with just a background layer. We would need to add two layers to this. So let's go ahead and go back down to our create layer button and click it, click OK, click it a second time and click OK again. So now as you can see, we have layer and layer number one. Go ahead and select the first layer. Go back to the wand box uh, template tab. So now you want to make sure you have the 11 by 17 A layer selected. You wanna hold Alt and then click on the layer. And that should, you can see this uh, selection box around it. So that should have selected this just like before in Photoshop. And then we need to go to edit and copy visible or sh control shift and C just like Photoshop. And then we're gonna go back to our template file and then we're going to paste into this layer. So you can do edit paste or control V. 
And GIMP will give you this floating selection layer when you paste it in, but just click outside of that while you have your rectangular selection tool to deselect, and it should just make this layer layer one. So now go to layer two or layer number one in this file, and we're going to do the other part. And that's pretty much the same idea. We're going to make sure that we go to 11 by 17 B. We're gonna hold Alt and click. Now you can see that that selection has become right here. Then we're going to go to edit and copy visible. Go back to our template tab that we're creating. Make sure you have that layer selected and control V or edit paste. Now again, deselect by clicking outside. And there we go. Now we have it set up just like we had it in Photoshop. We have two different layers which we can hide. So this first layer, you can print this then you can hide, show, and print this one, and you should be good to go. And if you do have any questions about this, if I didn't go over something um, very well, if you need some more information, let me know about it in the comment section below. And remember, at 17,000 subscribers, I'll be giving away a Marauder's Map. And this is a handmade Marauder's Map with uh, hidden footprints and a reversible cover. And now to announce the winner of a previous giveaway, which was Harry Potter inspired lighting decorations. And the winner is Gunner Pierce. Congratulations, and I've sent you an email with instructions on how you can claim your prize. Remember, I get a lot of ideas for these DIYs that I do from your comments. So if you have an idea for something that you want to see me do in the future, definitely leave a comment below and let me know. If you're interested in seeing more DIY videos having to do with Harry Potter and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.